So one of my fantasy football team names this year is going to be Flaming Bird Carcasses. Now, a couple months ago, I had no idea that Flaming Bird Carcasses were a thing, that apparently birds just burst into flames if they touch electrical lines in the wrong way, and that those burning bird bits start wildfires. Three in Colorado this summer. Marshall Zellinger explains why so many birds can chill comfortably on power lines and a select few, unfortunately, get crispy. A bird simply standing on a wire is not going to start a fire. It needs a matchbook and matches. I kid. How is it that three times in the last month and a half, birds on electrical equipment have started wildfires along the front range? Most often when a bird is electrocuted, it doesn't catch fire and then we don't hear about it. Surprisingly, there is a bit of an expert in this field, Taylor Barnes, a biologist who studies wildlife. Primarily what we focus on is avian safety as it relates to power poles. On Tuesday in Roxborough Park, a wildfire started at the base of a power pole. Four birds were found electrocuted on the ground. At the end of July, a fire near the Fort restaurant that was quickly put out was also caused by a bird on fire. Sometimes they burst into flames, sometimes they just fall dead. In mid-July, in eastern Arapahoe County, the Quail Hollow fire that destroyed someone's home started when a bird was electrocuted on this piece of electrical equipment. Equipment. Barnes isn't the investigator, but could see a likely scenario. Sometimes what can happen uh, is insects can get inside that cap. Well, that attracts birds. Birds like to eat insects, in particular woodpeckers and crows. So something like that could have sat on that jumper wire and pecked into that arrestor cap, trying to get at the insects, making contact with the energized components and then causing it to catch fire. The Quail Hollow fire and the one in Roxborough Park were on core electric power lines. A spokeswoman tells us the co-op tries to protect against bird electrocution. We've got these kind of protections and coatings to keep them from pecking through that, um, but there's also, you know, elements of it that can't always be 100% covered. But if you're looking for one takeaway of this story, it's probably this. Not every bird that is electrocuted will fall to the ground and start a fire. I love my job. Wow. How are birds becoming electrified? It's kind of like charging a battery. They have to touch two different wire phases at the same time, which is why they can be on that one wire with no problem, or they can be fried touching a wire and a path to the ground, which is when they're, they're pecking at that hole, maybe they're hitting something they shouldn't, or they hit metal, and then that's that. I also just need to know, how did we go decades into our lives without ever knowing that this is a thing, and now this summer it's just like Firebird, Firebird, Firebird? <laughs> uh, Taylor has done studies on this. He studied from 2014 to 2018 and found 44 incidents across the country, including two in Colorado. So we must have missed the news releases between 2014 and 2018 of those two that said flaming bird carcass started fire at X agency. But now we're watching it, forgive me. Like a hawk. Marshall, thank you.